I, this is fantastic. Great to have you all here. As you know, this has been quite a year uh, for a number of reasons. And it's been a year of little and big miracles.
community addresses us. Um, I wanted to make an announcement which I didn't make earlier. After the recessional, we will all be standing out in the hall. And as soon as the music stops, your inclination is going to be to descend into chaos again. <laughs> My, my father died at, 
at 53 in my senior year of college. My sister died 10 years later at 34, leaving, leaving behind three small children. While I was overcome with grief and sadness during those times, I remember thinking how important it is not to take anything or anyone for granted, not to sweat the small stuff and tell people things could be worse. Today, I surround myself with inspirational quotes. In my bedroom, miracles happen every day. She believed she could, and so she did. Uh, on my desk at work, beyond lucky, blessed. In my wallet, on my Facebook page, and that's about all you're ever gonna find. <laughs> Last Saturday, I posted the following. I am blessed. Today, I will focus on all that is right in my life. These quotes remind me how fortunate I am each and every day. My maintaining a positive attitude has allowed me to feel I have more control over my life. Lesson two, set goals. Three and a half years ago, I set two goals for myself. Not to look sick and to see my, graduate, my daughter graduate from college, which she had just started. While I have my share of good days, when I'm not feeling so perky, those are my key words, in general I do, so I get up, get dressed, fix the hair, and put on some makeup, because if I look good, I feel good, and I'm able to have a productive day. Having lost my father in the middle of my senior year in college, and the hole in my heart because he did not see me graduate, fueled my determination to be there to share Kaylin's, Kaylin's important day. I have a week to go. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And I have set new goals for myself. 60 is a few years away. If you can figure out, you can figure out the math. Another, another one of my classmates is planning a party, and the date is already on the calendar. Having a goal or goals on which to focus is extremely motivating for me. Lesson three. Humor. A little goes a very, very long way. I use it as often as I can. Lesson four. Nurture relationships. Most especially those with my family and true friends. Because in reality, they are all that matter. I am a list maker by nature, and my to-do list used to be filled with a significant amount of really unimportant stuff to do. I still make lists, often filled with really unimportant stuff to do. But the following are always at the top of my mental to Make time for family and friends. Spend time with them. Be present with them. Make memories with them. And make new friends too. Lesson five. Express gratitude every day. My 2016 New Year's resolution was to report in a journal something for which I was grateful each day. My journal writing lasted less than a week, <laughs> but I do converse with God almost every day and thank him for all the blessings he has given me. My family, friends, my colleagues, my ministers, my doctors, my nurses. I express my gratitude for each day, getting up early enough to see a see a bright pink, sun, bright pink sunrise, listening to the birds sing, hearing the first peep frogs announcing the beginning of spring, witnessing one of my students in an aha moment, a spur of the moment get together with friends, movie night with my daughter, sitting on the beach listening to the waves roll onto the shore while looking out over the horizon, just to name one, to name one that just on several occasions since the beginning of the year, Westover has been at the top of my gratitude list. And 
more specifically, and Helena. Anne, who started at Westover with my class in the fall of 1972, is an honorary member of the class of 1976. She would have been celebrating her 40th reunion this weekend as well. She was my teacher, advisor, mentor, and a cherished friend. Like so many of you here, she dramatically changed my life while I was a student at Westover and continued to have a significant, meaningful impact on it in the 43 years since. But never more than in the last two, as we each faced our ovarian cancer illness. As I put together my unit and its lessons, I had come to realize that Anne, ever the teacher, was showing me what to do when life hands you lemons. Today, she is at the top of my gratitude list. I am prof profoundly grateful to her. Not only for the life lessons she so generously shared with me, but also for the extraordinary courage, strength, dignity, and grace that she taught me by her example each and every day in her life. They say you never really leave Earth if you leave a legacy. If that is true, and I believe it is, then Anne is still with us in our minds, in our hearts, and most definitely in this place. And if you are counting, <laughs> lesson six. <laughs> Don't wait. Do it. Whatever that is, whatever that it is. Now. Perhaps the wisest person I know. 
I've struggled to define wisdom, but when I think of her, the definition that I come up with is knowledge transformed by love. Wisdom is a way of understanding the world and the people in it deeply and with compassion. And no one exemplifies this more for me than my mom. During the final months of Anne's illness, Elizabeth Polina found herself reading a poem by, over and over, a poem by Mary Oliver, who was one of Anne's favorite poets. And it contains the line, Sometimes I only need to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Elizabeth wrote, My mother somehow found a way to stand each day in such a place. It was a place she created by the simple act of believing wholeheartedly in its existence. The more I live in a world that can seem hopelessly fragmented by mistrust, competition, or injustice, the more I am struck with awe by this deep-rooted optimism. I am awed by the courage required to live believing that unmet strangers are disposed to be kind, that they will return generosity with generosity and selflessness with selflessness. And you think of Anne's smile. One must live this way despite the crippling fear of disappointment because, as she ardently professed, people who sense your faith in their goodness will, in fact, rarely disappoint you. And even if they do, there's always tomorrow to start again. Each day, my mother was, each day for my mother was an opportunity to open her heart and in doing so to draw me, my father, my sister, and all fortunate enough to know her into her own blessed space. That was Elizabeth. A life open and transformed by love is, we might say, a blessed life in which love knows. A life in which love knows people, a life in which love knows what people are capable of, a life that lifts others by the power of its own aspiration, a life that calls those around it to their better selves. Is it any accident that Anne found in her students, in all of the girls she taught over more than four decades, is it any accident that she found that they were able to do remarkable things? That things that many of her predecessors had thought were the province of men. Is it any accident that she was at the forefront of expanding our culture's view of the province of women? I cannot count the number of times I have heard over the years, and especially during the last year, that Anne's students, as well as those who came to know her outside the classroom, and after all, we are all Anne's students, how often have I heard her students say that they realized in her presence just how capable they were, just how hard they could think, just how good they could be, just how much the world had to offer them, and just how much they had to offer to the world. Just how much women can and must change the world. They and all who worked with and all who knew her, all of us, have been lifted and blessed by her love's knowledge. were, through the miraculous prism of her life, given a clear picture of our better selves. So, I would like to remember and we know.
Almighty God, we pray for these and other West Coast friends who are not with us in chapel this morning, but who are in our thoughts at this reunion time. We entrust all who are dear to us to your never failing care and love in this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them a good that exceeds even our deep. 